pictures I don't have. All right. Good evening, everybody. We're glad that everybody could be here uh, with us with Passion for God Ministries. We'd like to welcome you in. And uh, real quickly, let's uh, open up in prayer, get our hearts and minds upon God. Our dear Father, Lord, we are thankful, Jesus, for your mercy and your kindness. And Father, we ask, Lord, that you let our hearts and minds be at ease this evening, Father, that we can come into the mercy seat with you. And Father, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you be with the pastor, Lord, as he brings the word. Father, I ask that you take every problem or every situation or every thought out of his mind so that he can preach your word to the best of his ability. Father, Lord, I ask that you be with each and every one under the sound of my voice. Father, let us take the burdens of life and cast them away at this time so that we can be focused on you. And God, we give you all the praise and the glory you deserve in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right now, we're going to uh, have Sister Amy come up and take prayer requests. If you have a prayer request, we're going to ask that you drop them down in the comments. And we will be looking and watching, and we'll, we'll make sure those are known. Good evening to all. We want to thank you all for joining us live this evening. Um, like Brother Mike said, if anyone has a prayer request at this time, feel free to drop it in the comments and we will look over those and make sure that we get them jotted down and we pray over them. At this time, we will ask anyone that is here present with us this evening if they have a prayer request. Okay. We're going to be praying for Doug Stratton. Amen. Anyone else? <clears throat> Let's keep our ministry in your prayers. Yes. Jimmy's at our church. Amen. And uh, uh, Brother Mike and Angela's ministry this evening. Let's let's keep them in prayer. And while that being said, let's let's remember every church out there, every ministry. Amen. Um, we, you know, all the pastors, pastor twice, the congregation. You know, we have so many that are falling out, um, doors that are closing. So let's remember every ministry this evening in our prayers. Amanda said all my kids and grandkids. Amanda's kids and grandkids. Your grandma and grandpa. Let's remember Charles and Mildred Bertrees. Amen. Let's remember Cheyenne and Shelby this morning, or this evening, I'm sorry. Anyone else? Kayla Page and the baby. Okay, let's remember Kayla and Paige and grandbaby. And Chris and Alexis. And Chris and Alexis. Anyone else? Amy, let's uh let's let's keep everybody um, that's lost and undone without God. Let's yeah. make sure that we, we pray for them especially because you know in, in the world in the time that we live in today uh, I, I wouldn't know uh, what to do without him. Uh, you know, he, he's, uh, God is the light. He's the glue of relationships and, and marriages and, and all the above. So let's, let's remember the loss for sure. Amen. Jimmy's, Jimmy's going to keep you in his prayers. He's not feeling well. Amen. Okay. Kay and her kids. Okay. Kay and her kids. Let's remember all of our family yeah. today, yeah. all of our children, grand, grandbabies. Yeah. Remember all the lost. <clears throat> and today I asked a very special prayer request. Uh, let's remember everybody out of Park County Manor. Yeah. 
I won't go into the details, but I just ask that you all please keep them in your prayers today. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Let's remember all the ones that are sick, laying in hospital beds, nursing homes. Amen. You know, there's, there's a lot of people that cannot get out. They're not able to do much. They're not able to be in church. Uh, they're simply not able to get out of bed. Amen. There's so many that would love to be where we're at today. Yeah. So let's keep all those in our prayers. Lena Kurtzinger, because I, I can't get in touch with her for some reason. Yes, let's let's remember Lena Kurtzinger, a good longtime friend, family member of ours. Amen. Anyone else? <coughs> Anyone else? All right. Yep. Let's go, to Lord, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for always showing grace and mercy yes. and forgiveness, Lord. Lord, we, just, we come to you, Lord. We ask that you watch over each and every one on this prayer list, Lord. Yes, Lord. Not only that, but the ones that we may have skipped over and not mentioned, Lord. Yes. Ones that we may have forgotten and the ones forgotten, Lord, we apologize for that. The Lord, you know each and every one of their needs. We ask, Lord, that you just watch over everyone, keep them safe. And Lord, we thank you for that. We we thank you for always loving us. Yes, Jesus. And giving that healing, Lord, that we each and every one we don't deserve, but we need. Yes. We thank you for that each and every day, Lord. But we ask that you watch over the service, Lord. Watch over the pastor as he brings the word. Yes. Jesus. And the hymns that are that are brought today, Lord. And Lord, as we depart. We just ask that you keep us all safe as we go out there and we journey on. Yes. Well, we thank you for loving us and we love you. In your name we ask everything, Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 <laughs> This time we're going to do some songs here. Hershey's milk chocolate with whole almonds. It's pretty much the tastiest balancing act of all time. Yeah. 
service, but God is telling me to go ahead and do it here. Alright, but this song here that we're going to do, or I'm going to do, talks about being blessed. And all of us, I'm sure in the world, if we look look around, uh, Sister Amy, we can find a reason to be blessed. And we just want you all to listen. One less man. to keep me warm and to shelter to me from the storms yes I am Jesus in my heart 
And I know he won't be poor Because I am I'm one blessed friend And these are a few of the blessings That I have known And if I had time I could go on Just to you, who's that man? What does he do? Well, just tell him I am. without him. He's, he's my lead post. He's my everything. So listen to this word. I can't even walk. When I thought that I had done a lot on my head. Yes, I thought I could make it. Let me talk to you. Of all alone Well I thought That I could be All I seek He said But Lord I can't Even walk Without you Holding my hand Yes Lord I can Without you holding my hand Oh, the mountain is too high Yes, I am the valley too wide Down on my knees That's where I
One thing that we all have to remember, really, is that no matter what we're going through, God has a way out. I'm not a warrior. I'm too afraid to lose. I'm feeling qualified for what you're calling me to do. But Lord, with your strength, I've got no excuse. Cause broken people are exactly who you use Give me faith like Daniel in a lion's den Give me hope like Moses in a wilderness Give me a heart like David, Lord be my defense So I can face my giants with confidence Trust you and give you everything. I'll be a conqueror, cause you'll fight for me. I'll be a champion, claiming your victory. Give me faith like Daniel in a lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me heart like David. Sing and shout and shake the wall Won't stop until I see you fall Gonna stand up, step out when you call Jesus, Jesus Gonna sing and shout and shake the wall Won't stop until I see you fall
Okay. As we go into today's service, I want everybody to keep in mind that no matter where we're at or what we're doing, God is not only here, but he is watching everything. And he sees it all. Now, the only thing that I'm going to say, and then I'm going to go into reading 2 Timothy chapter 2, is before I start to read that, I'm going to ask everybody one question. And that question may not be understood starting out, but it will be understood when it's done. And the question that I have for everybody is why not? Now, as we go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says, You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these things, or these, to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead. According to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit. To the ruin of the hearers, be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, 
in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Now, with that being read, what all does it mean? For many of us, even though we say that we are believers, we still do not have that understanding. We still do not have that knowledge. We still refuse to open our ears, open our eyes, open our minds, open our hearts, and shut our mouths. Because as long as we are moving our mouths, it is a proven fact. We cannot, under any circumstances, hear or see anything that God is trying to show us. Yeah. There are many people who go around in this world, they will go to church, they will read their Bible, they will pray, they will have conversations with God, but the second they step away, they are back to their old self. Mm -hmm. What is the point in this? Is it does not matter if you read the Bible every second of every day of your life. It does not matter. If you pray to God every second of every day of your life, it does not matter if you go to church every second of every day of your life. If your heart is not with God, you have gained nothing. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus himself teaches us that there is going to come a time people are going to approach him. Mm -hmm. They are going to say, Lord, Lord, and he is going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. He said there is many that's going to worship him with their mouths, but their hearts are going to be far from him. The Lord says that we cannot hide. He sees all. He hears all. Mm -hmm. If you really want to know what type of person you truly are, it is not revealed when you are around other people. It is revealed when you are by yourself. Mm -hmm. Because even then, God is present. Even then, God knows what you're saying. Even then, God knows what you're doing. Mm -hmm. God knows what you're thinking because he does not search the outward appearance. He searches what's on the inside out. Just as Jesus teaches us, then in order to be clean, we must first clean the inside so that the outside may be clean also. Now, why is this such a strong message? Why is this something that we cannot forget? I will tell you why. This day and age, this world is trying to lead as many people away from Christ as they can. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. If you study the Word of God and you understand the Word of God, what He is trying to tell you, that most of the people leading people away from Christ are the ones that say they believe in Him. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that say they follow Him. The problem is not on the outside of these ministry buildings. The problem is on the inside, as I have stated before. For God teaches us to know right from wrong. He says that he has put it in our minds and on our hearts so that nobody can deny knowing anything about him. So that we can all turn to God. You see, God can easily destroy this earth right now. Mm -hmm. But unlike us on this earth, the reason God has not destroyed it is because he is hoping everyone will turn away from their sin. Everybody would accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. So that nobody will go to eternal damnation and spend eternity in hell. But that everybody would turn from their wicked ways, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, believe that he is a son of God, believe that he died on the cross, believe that he rose on the third day, and believe that after he had finished his work, after rising, he ascended into heaven at the right hand side of the throne, awaiting his enemies to become his footstool. Now, if there is nobody that has not accepted Jesus Christ, you was just given the perfect example of how you can welcome him into your heart. And for those of us that knows God's word, be warned. Mm -hmm. Because if we are going to go about this world, doing what this world does, and then trying to claim that we are Christians, we are in a greater danger than anyone else is. That's right. Because the Bible teaches us that it is better for those who have not known God's word and not live by it than it is for those to do know God's word 
and still choose not to live by it. You see, everything in our thoughts, everything in our hearts, if you're giving in to worry, stress, anxiety, depression, anger, gossiping, backbiting, telling other people's business that is not yours to tell, for God says clearly that a fool, when he sees danger ahead, he will rush right into it. But a wise man will turn away. God also says, do not judge lest ye be judged according to the measure that you judge others. God also says that a wise man will conceal a matter, but a fool will reveal it to everyone for the intent purposes of being a backbiter, to be a gossip, to be a soothsayer. Mm -hmm. Things that we are all told we are never to do. But, you see, that's where God gives us the free will. Why? Because he wants to find out who truly does want to follow him. Amen. He wants to find out who truly does love him. Who is willing to step out of the old and into the new. When you step out of the old and into the new, that means everything that you were beforehand is to be left behind. You don't pick it back up and carry it with you. If you do, you have gained nothing. It's like the Bible teaches us, if I have many possessions and I sell it all and I give all to the poor and have not love, I have gained nothing. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? Because God says he is love. He also says that anything we say or do that is not of him, that we are not of him. Jesus says we can't even get to the Father unless we go through the Son. Jesus' exact words, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. Amen. And then we're also in this danger of walking along this world and only doing what we need to do, only involving God in what we want to involve him in. But if you go to the end of Revelations, it's going to tell you exactly what's going to happen to you on that. For those who add to the word, to the word of the Bible, all of the plagues of this world will be added to their life. For those who subtract from the words of the Bible will be subtracted from the book of life. It's simple. Jesus even goes as far as saying that for those who want to be, you know, lukewarm, God's exact words is he detests lukewarm believers. He'd rather you be hot or cold. Jesus describes it in a more graphic manner when he says that those that are lukewarm, those that say they are believers, but yet they do not lead with their heart, he says they're like a dog who vomits and later go back to their own vomit. Mm -hmm. Or a person who looks into the mirror, and the second he walks away, he forgets what he looks like, what type of man he was. So you see, everything that we do now, we're seeing dimly as looking into a mirror, just like the Bible teaches us. But when we come face to face with Jesus, everything will be made clear because then we will be seen as we are seen, not as we see now. There is a difference between looking and seeing. There is a difference between listening and actually hearing. There is a difference between letting something enter your mind and actually understanding it. There is a difference between letting something enter your heart and actually discerning it. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible teaches us of all things the heart can be deceived. We have to choose free willingly to yeah. live for God. We have this opportunity. We could be like all of those in the past when Christianity first started being convicted, condemned even to death. That is also what Paul was talking about there when he said that even he himself was an evildoer in Christ. Why? Because before he became Paul, his name was Saul. What did he do? He persecuted Christians. He hunted them down, imprisoned them, and even helped execute some. Until God made him go blind. Was not given back his sight until God sent who he chose to send to him. And his name was no longer known as Saul. He changed it to Paul. Many people wonder why does God change people's names in the Bible when he chooses them to do his work? Does he not say we're stepping out of the old and into the new? Amen. 
So why would God want Saul, as known as Saul, who is a persecutor, going around and teaching and preaching the word of God? See, he pulled him out of that and into a new position. So he changed his name to Paul so that he could be seen as the new, not the old. He wants every single one of us to choose him each and every day. That is a choice. Nobody can force it. And let me tell you something that is another reason for this scripture that God has put on my heart. The second he brought it to my attention, it immediately, I will admit, righteously angered me. For the simple fact that we have so many different believers out here that think they have the right to go and tell people how to live. We have pastors getting behind a podium and telling people, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. If you listen to this, if you watch that, you're going to hell. The last time I checked, the Bible says lead by example, not tell by example. Because the second we start telling people how to live, we have removed God from the judgment seat and we have placed ourselves there. Why does God not want us making that mistake? Because there's only one direction it's leading. What does Jesus teach? That the broad and wide path leads to destruction. Very many will find it. That the straight and narrow path leads to eternal life and very few will find it. Now what is the problem with that? There's too many people that thinks that they're going to be able to speak God's word, try to make it sound like it's from God, but guess what? Anyone that truly follows God is going to know they are lying. And what does God say about lying? Thou shalt not lie. Is it not part of the Ten Commandments? Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, well, that's part of the Old Testament. Okay. That's part of the Old Testament. Many people don't want to follow that because of it being part of the Old Testament. They think it's obsolete. But how are you going to know in the future what the New Testament is talking about if you don't also know the Old Testament? And if they want to say, oh, well, that's just part of the Old Testament... Yes, the Ten Commandments was originally created to show the Israelites how sinful they already were. But if you go, if that's the way you want to look at it, you go into the New Testament. What does it say? To put all evil speaking behind you with all malice. It still goes on to say that we are to tell the truth. We are to lead with love. We are to lead by example. And we are to be a direct reflection and resemblance of Jesus Christ himself. Now I will tell you. Because it says this in the Bible. Not that of myself. But if you actually study the word of God. Just like God says to meditate on his word beginning your day. Meditate on his word ending your day. Why? Because that is our strength. That is our roadmap. But if we are going to sit back and we are going to say that we are Christians, that we believe in God, but then we go and be around certain people and we become a different type of person to where when you come to a ministry, you are going to sit there, you're going to listen to God, you're going to praise the Lord's name, but then when you go around another group of people, you're just going to lie. You're going to gossip. You're going to put people down. You're going to criticize. You're going to judge. Well, let me tell you something. Everything that you just did then, you lied to God. And you are not going to get away with it. See, everybody says, oh, well, I've got time because in this life, I can easily confess my sins and repent of them before I die. That's right. You do have that time. But here's the catch. You don't know when that time's up. You may say, oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Now, what if you don't see the next second? Mm -hmm. Opportunity lost. Because everybody has to remember what Jesus says. He says to do the work while it is still yet day. For when it becomes night, you cannot see to do it. Amen. And let me put it a little bit more blunt way. That while you are living, that is the time for your work. Because once you're dead, the work is over. You cannot prove anything. Come Judgment Day, God does not teach us anywhere written in the Bible that on Judgment Day, He is going to allow us to defend ourselves. No, He says on Judgment Day, He is going to judge us. Yeah. We're not going to be able to say a word. So once we leave this world and die, that's it. You're done. The work is over. 
You can't prove nothing. And for those of us who thinks that we're going to get away with doing stuff in secret, or going behind people's back and saying or doing things against them that we are not allowed to do, that God teaches us not to do, guess what? God gives us a clear example of what's going to happen with that. What you do in the dark, he's bringing to the light. Mm -hmm. What you do in secret, he is going to shout on the rooftops for all to hear. And then, what's going to happen? Your true side's going to be revealed. And also, let me tell you something else. Many people has got this all mixed up. They think that even if they do know when they're going to leave this world, which they have no clue, that's just guesswork. And they can't say that God revealed to them when they're leaving this world. Because even, you know, it's like Judgment Day. People say, oh, it's going to come now. It's going to come here. It's going to come at that time. What's Jesus say? He says nobody knows the end times except the Father himself. He even goes on to say that not even he knows. That only the Father knows. So, what does that mean? Not only do we not know when that day of judgment is coming, we don't know when our life is over. We cannot predict anything. So therefore, by putting off what we can do at this second, we're making a huge mistake. Yeah. God says to follow him. He does not say follow the world. He does not say that we are allowed to do what everybody else around us does and get away with it. And the reason I say this about not knowing when judgment day comes, the reason I say we don't know when our time is over it's because when God reveals that to us, we will know. Not only in our hearts, but in our minds. That's why Jesus says we are to love the Lord thy God with all of our heart, our mind, our body, our soul, and our strength. Does not say <clears throat> pretend. He does not say come to me. Say you want to live for me and lie to me like you do these people on this earth. For he strictly says that the king of this world is Satan. He strictly says that we cannot serve both this world and him because we will love the one and detest the other. We cannot serve Satan and God. We cannot divide God's word. Yeah. What does it say about a house divided? It says a house divided cannot stand. And for those of us who thinks we're going to live by the way of the world and still have the ways of God, still have the blessings, the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness, the love, the compassion from God, we are wrong because the Bible even gives us a clear description of that when it says the foolish man that built his house on the sand. Mm -hmm. When the waters came and the winds came and beat against that house, it fell. But the wise man, he built his house on the rock. What is the rock? Jesus is the chief cornerstone. He is the permanent foundation. When we do that, the winds will come. The waves will toss up against that house, and it is not going anywhere. For God is in it. His presence will be made known to anybody and everybody at any given second if we want it to. There is no way out. And the other part about the judgment, not knowing when it's going to come, many people think that everything they did wrong is only going to come upon their heads come judgment day. Wrong. The Bible teaches us clearly that not all of our punishments is going to wait for judgment day. There are going to be times we are going to be punished on this earth, too, because God's not going to hold off on it. He won't cause bad things to happen, but he will allow them to happen. Now, how do I know that God's still going to punish people on this earth? There again, the Old Testament is not obsolete. God chose Israel as his own chosen people. What happened when they did right? He was with them. 
what happened when they did wrong. He punished them. He didn't wait for them to die. In fact, he punished people that he chose for himself so much that two times at the beginning being in the wilderness, he destroyed a couple thousand of them at once. All in one day. <coughs> These are people he chose for himself. Yeah. We, the Gentiles, came later. So if he's going to purposely punish people, he chose his self. What do you think he's going to do to those that came in afterwards? Now, does that mean God's going to strike you dead for your sins that you're committing? No. God did that back then because he wanted to prove a point to him. You're either going to serve me or you're not. He gives them the promised land, and he has to take it away from them multiple times because the only thing they knew how to do was try to serve other gods. They tried to worship things that wasn't gods. <clears throat> you see, that's why it says what, what, their, uh, idolatry is a greater sin. Why? Well, for one, God says he's a jealous God. Mm -hmm. Do not provoke him to anger. What does Jesus tell Satan when he's uh, testing him? He says, do not tempt the Lord thy God. He says, do not worship no one but God. And, you know, people want to say, oh, well, my struggles and my hardships are too strong for God. And I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. That's like this saying about people saying money ain't going to grow on trees. It ain't going to just fall from the sky because they think God has no interest in people's financial situations. Well, let me tell you something. If you really, honestly, truly believe and have faith in God, the words that it's not going to grow on trees and it's not going to fall from the skies would have never, ever entered your mind and came out your mouth. Now, how can I say that? Because if God wants to send us what we need growing on trees or from the sky... It's going to happen. And for someone to say that it's not going to, that just proves they have no faith. Amen. Faith is believing in something or someone you cannot see. It is not believing in what you can already see. And how can I sit here and say that if God wants it to grow on trees, if God wants it to fall from the sky, it's going to happen? Simple. Again, go back to the Old Testament. Go back to the wilderness with Israel. What did he do? He caused heaven's manna to fall from the sky. He caused the quail to fall from the sky to feed the Israelites. He had Moses strike a daggone rock, let it split in half, and water gushed out to give them water. So, if anybody's truly paying attention to the word when they read it, whether you are in the Old Testament or the Old, uh, New Testament, or not, you will understand when God says, and this is the kicker for people saying stuff like that, knowing it's false, if they truly believe. As God clearly teaches us about how he did it back then. But doesn't he also go on to say, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if, that, if we truly believe God's promises, if we truly believe God's word, then there is no way we could ever sit back and say anything is not going to happen a certain way. Amen. If God wants it that way, it's being done that way. But here's the other problem that many of us are faced with that wants to say God's not interested. He wants to say, oh, well, I, I've sinned so much. God's not interested in me. Or they're going to, God don't want to come and talk to me. You know, doesn't it say that's why Jesus died on the cross? So that we can be forgiven? What, are we calling God a liar now? Are we telling him that Jesus died on that cross was for some other purpose? And for those of us, you know, that want to sit back I think God's not going to help or they're going to worry and stress and give in to anxiety about the things going on around them. I hate to say this, though. Hold on. Let me rephrase that. I do not hate to say this. 
if you have to sit back and worry about the situations in your life, then you might want to question your own faith. Because if you are worrying, you're not trusting God. If you are given in to anxiety and stress, you are not trusting God because you know He can pull you out of it. How do you know? He says so. Mm -hmm. If you believe Him, you would know so. That's like this situation. You know, God brings people into our lives when we need them and when we don't. But the bad thing about it is, is so does Satan. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you something that many pastors don't like to preach on, and that is about Satan. Why does Satan want you to join him in hell? Yeah, I know most pastors, they, they stray away from the whole concept of hell. But that's exactly where many of us will go, and that is the way God judges us if we don't change. God has to bring forth in our lives only what we allow him to bring according to our faith and belief. So you see, when God brings people into your life, if somebody is there reaching out to help, to guide, to lead, or even just giving a helping hand, the problem with this world, if they are not really seeking God and truly living for God, is there is no gratefulness. There is no appreciation. There is no thankfulness for any of it. Because it's not in them, because God is not in them. If God was in them, it would be there. If God was with them, it would never fade away. Because what could have happened is God could have stepped aside, let Satan step in, and then when Satan brings someone into your life, it's going to lift you up for a certain period of time, and then guess what? You're destroyed. Everything's gone. That is the difference between living for God and living for Satan. Are you thankful? Are you grateful? Are you appreciative? But here's the kicker. Don't just say it. Are you showing it? Are you living it? Because if you are not, you're not serving God. Mm. And you know, that's why God says that in order for anybody to teach and preach His Word, we have to put our own homes in order. That's not, you know, many people are going to say, oh, well, you got to have your own home to do that. No, you don't. What is your home? There again, where does he judge you from? The inside. That's your home. With God. Now, yes, there is a kicker. When you become married, the two are joined together to become one. And no longer two separate. So yeah, your home just got bigger. But what are you going to do with it? Are you going to allow that home, that marriage, to grow on the foundation of the principles of Jesus Christ and the examples he led with while he walked on this earth? Or are you going to allow Satan to grab hold of your hand and take you anywhere he wants? Because this is the other part that many people tend to forget about Satan. God says he is the most patient being ever. You know, many people will say every time something goes wrong, that's Satan. No, it's not. A lot of the times when the small things that are going wrong in our life, that's your fault. Satan has nothing to do with it. God says he is the most patient being ever, which means he is going to wait for things to add up. He's not going to attack on every little tiny thing. He's going to wait for the biggest moment that he can hit you the hardest and draw you away from God all at once. That's how Satan works. Mm -hmm. And don't be fooled. I know people don't like to say this. In fact, I actually, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say this, but Satan's not stupid. Mm -hmm. How can I say that? The Bible teaches us Satan was God's most trusted angel until him and a third of the angels rebelled against God, tried to take over heaven, lost the war, and was cast out of heaven. So you see, Satan knows every tiny aspect of God. He can make anything believable that he wants. He can quote scripture. 
He knows God better than we ever will. But here's the thing. That's why God says meditate on his word beginning your day. Meditate on his word ending your day. Because when Satan quotes scripture, he's either going to leave something out or he's going to add something to it. And if you are not willing to make time for God to study his word, you're going to think that whatever's being spoken to you is the truth. Mm -hmm. Why? We have time for all this worry. And there's a kicker. We have time for all this worry. We have time for all this stress. We have time to go and do this and do that that we're interested in in life. We have and we have time to uh, set back and not fully trust in the Lord. But we don't have time for God. Mm -hmm. You see, this is the danger of not serving both the world and God. Because even mentally you could be doing that. And if you don't study God's word, you're not going to catch that either. Because if you are still taking the time to worry, if you are still taking the time to stress, if you are still taking the time to be backbiters, to gossip, to judge other people, to put other people down, to criticize other people, to stomp other people to the ground, but you don't have time to make for God, you're pretty much choosing for God what direction you want to go on Judgment Day. You're pretty much telling God what's more important. And by doing these things, you're also telling God who you choose to serve more. And in that situation, you are not choosing God. If we were choosing God, there would be no need for worry. Amen. There would be no need for stress. Does that mean troubles are not going to come? No. No. But the Bible even teaches us about that. That when these trials, tribulations, and the trouble comes into our life, if we keep our heads up, if we keep our faith, when we come out of it, we will be brought out of it better off than we were when we went in. Amen. That is also the other reason why we need to meditate on God's Word beginning the day. Meditate on God's Word ending the day. Why? Because God also tells us, do not worry about the past. Mm -hmm. He tells us, do not worry about the future. It's not right. promised. He says to concentrate on each day, for each day possesses its own trouble. Yeah. <clears throat> How can you overcome trouble? You can face it with your own strength. But you're going to run into a roadblock. Mm -hmm. You're going to get only so far... And then the world is going to have a harder punch than you. But if you face it with God's strength, when you come to that roadblock, God's going to remove it. Or he's going to show you the way around it. Or he's going to show you the way through it. Mm -hmm. But that is the other point of living for God and making time for God. Yeah. He's not going to just give it free willingly to anybody that does not truly want it. If we truly want it, then we will receive it. You know, that's why Jesus says you have not because you have asked nothing in my name. That's why God says that when we pray, we are to believe what we have prayed for as though we have already received it even before we do. And to ask all things in the name of Jesus. It goes for life. Every second of every day. The scripture that we just read, 2 Timothy proves, God wants that relationship with us. He doesn't want it to end. But what do we do when we give in to the ways of the world and the things that are bad going on around us? We're helping it end. Yeah. We're bringing ourselves down to the pit. God ain't doing it. And if we're going to walk around with this stress and this anxiety and this worry and this trouble and not turn it over to God, then guess what else you're doing? You're making Satan's job easier. Mm -hmm. He don't have to lift a finger. He sits across the battlefield and just watches and laughs. 
Why? Because we're doing his job for him. And like I said, Satan's not stupid. If he don't have to lift a finger, why would he do any work? The biggest part of the time, we're doing the work for him anyway. And the sad thing is, is we're too blind to see it. And the even sadder thing is, is when it's brought to our attention, we're still too blind. Mm -hmm. We still choose the wrong path. We still choose to go in our own way. So here, back to the question. Why not? Why not live for God? Why not get it out of our hearts and minds of the way of the world? Mm -hmm. Why not choose God? Why not choose Jesus? Why not open our ears? Why not open our eyes? Why not open our minds and our hearts? For even Jesus tells us, if we lack wisdom, all we have to do is ask. But there, he also gives us plenty of warnings, too. You ask for it, believing you have received it, you will. But if you take those very same blessings, that very same wisdom and knowledge that God has given you, and you go back to using it for the ways of the world, or as a bragging right, or as a boasting right, when we should never brag or boast about anything but God himself, then guess what? You're going to lose it. That God will do. He will take it away. And most of the time, we lose things faster than we ever receive them because of that. Because most people, they let it in their mind, oh, when things are going right, why do I need to sit down and talk to God? Why do I need to pray to God? I don't need anything. Newsflash, if you're a Christian, whether everything's going perfect or not, you always need God. Mm -hmm. And there is no way around that. So you are always in need of something. But how many of us are willing to accept that? How many of us are willing to believe in God? How many of us are willing to take the challenge of leaving this world behind for a new life while we are still living here to follow Christ? You know, that's why Jesus says, deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. So that is the question to end this sermon. All of it, you can use that question in any way that you want, but there are so many millions of different questions or answers or thoughts that can answer towards that question, and that is why not. So, with that being said, as we go to end this service, anybody that needs prayer, anybody that needs to confess something to God and turn it over to God, you're more than welcome to come up here. I will sing a song. I will get Pastor Mike to pray for you. If I have to, I'll put that mic down and I'll pray for you too. But see, that is where, once again, you have the choice. Yeah. It's your right to choose. You don't have to. You can always do it secretly amongst God. But this is an opportunity presented. Amen. as they prepare sing this song.
circumstances of what this message was about and it doesn't matter who it is there is no making fun of people there is no gossiping in this ministry only God is to be able to move but considering that we do have this life and we have a lot to choose is there anyone here today that has any type of praise worthiness happening in their life that they're willing to share with others to help the force of God move and to show how he works in our lives I don't know about you all, but I've always got something to thank and praise God for. And today, or this morning as I was waking up, you know, I I didn't wake up feeling very, very good, didn't wake up feeling the best. Sniffles, body aches, pains, coughing up all night. But you know, as I was waking up, drinking a little bit of coffee, I thought to myself, I thank you, God and Jesus, for just allowing me to see this day. Because he did not have to wake me up no. this morning. <clears throat> and anyone that knows me personally, um, family, friends, just anyone out there, they know I've been through quite a bit health-wise. And 
You know, I've, I've broken my back twice. And this last time that I had broken, it, they said it could have paralyzed me. But God being the God that he is, being greater, being so merciful, he allowed me to continue working. Amen. It may not have been where I wanted to work, but I was still able to get up and go to work. Amen. And mind you, I'm still healing from it. It is going to take a little longer, being as it's the second time around, breaking my back. But I'm still up, able to be mobile and moving. No brace anymore that I have to wear. Amen. And I'm not in a wheelchair. As I said, that if wrong move, wrong turn, that's exactly where I'd be the rest of my life was wheelchair bound. Amen. So, you know, as I stand here today, I, I know I've got a lot to thank my Lord God for because I could not be standing here right now. Yeah. Giving him that praise, able to be just standing here, I could be in a wheelchair. With that being said, you know, we we have a habit a lot of times of complaining mm -hmm. of our aches and pains, complaining because labor feels too high, uh, rent's due, we, we don't know how we're going to pay it. And I'm quite guilty of that. You know, we do get discouraged. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you, God is greater, and God yes, always is. provides. God always makes a way if we just trust and believe and have faith yes. and not get discouraged. God will always make a way. Amen. And, yes, we do have to lead by example, mm -hmm. and not just with our actions, but the way we speak in front of others. Amen. And what we speak, we give life to you want a positive life, you speak it, you act it. Amen. That way others around you, when they see that life in you, when they see that positivity in you, they're going to ask you, well, how do you do that? Yeah. You know, I, I had somebody ask me the other day, they don't know how, how I'm, I'm doing it. With everything I've been through here recently, and being... At the last fair of the moment, I didn't know how to answer that question. But now, now that I think about it, I couldn't get through this life without God holding my hand. Yeah. Without fully relying on God. Amen. Without fully relying on His strength, not my own. Because if I was relying on my own strength, I, I would fail every time. And I have failed many a times Amen. but putting my full faith and trust in him and relying on his strength only that that's how i keep going Amen. that is why i'm here standing today and able to stand up without being in a wheelchair not not wearing that brace even though i still have a lot of pain Amen. but i'm still trusting in god that he's going to heal me completely yeah and that i'm going to be able to return to the type of work that i want to do because I know that God is able to heal me completely. If I just ask and believe and have trust and faith in Him, mm -hmm. that's all it takes. Amen. Well, I just, I just want to give Him the praise, the honor, and the, and the glory today. Because if it had not been for Him, I, I wouldn't even be here. I would have made it through everything I've made it through. Anyone else? You know, I, I want to, I definitely want to, it's not my time, it's not my uh, place to, to say anything, but, but you know, we, you know, as Pastor Mike said, uh, you know, we, we do need to open our eyes and see where we stand. And, and I, I, I want to say this to you, if anything at all, uh, you know, we all have a lot to be thankful for. I'm thankful for for all of my family, but most of all, I'm, I'm thankful that God has has given me the partner that He's given me. Amen. Even though we go through trials and troubles and tribulations, but that's still who God has given me, and I'm thankful uh, for that. I'm thankful that 
You know, when I'm down, she picks me up. When she's down, I pick her up. Together, when we're down, God picks us up. So I'm thankful for that. We all, we, you know, as Pastor Mike said, we do need to be an example for those that are around. Because I'm going I'm to share something with you real quickly. If, if, a, if a child who has a learning disability I can sit down at the table and read his Bible with no problem, then anybody else should be able to do it. Amen. If he can do it, then anybody can do it. So I'm just thankful to this day uh, to be here and, and Brother Mike, you know, uh, mature in, in Christ and in, in his teachings and his preaching and and uh, you know Amy being with us. You know, uh, woke up this morning feeling funny myself, but I said, you know what, devil, you are a liar. Uh, that's just the way it is. The devil's here to destroy and kill us, but. Uh, you know, I'm just thankful to be here tonight. Anywhere else? There's two of them on here. <coughs> Amanda says, I'm, I'm thankful Put for up, waking up. up. Put up there. Mm-mm. Mike, okay. let Michael read it now. You need to read it out loud so all can hear it. Okay. Amanda says, I'm thankful for waking me up. She thanks God for waking her up, and she thanks him for a new grandbaby. And he and she thanks him for all the church family. Mama says, "I'm thankful for everything that God has allowed my me to have, and I'm thankful for my kids and grandchildren, and great and my great grandkids." And uh, Amanda said that you will find the positive in any situation. Not anybody else. You got something to say? Because I feel that you do. Yeah. You got something to say? I'm just grateful for being here and uh, hopefully that I get through my eye surgery because I'm scared to death. Anyone else? Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this this service, Lord, this message. We thank you for the, the songs that were brought today. And we just ask that you watch over each and every one of us. Lord, protect us. The ones on the, on the prayer list, Lord, we know you'll protect and watch over them as well. We thank you for that. Lord, as we depart today from, from this service, but we ask that you be with each and every one of us as we go our separate ways. But you know, you know our, our lives, what we, we struggle with, what we're going through, Lord. And we know that you will lead the way. We know that you will be there to help us and to protect us, Lord. And we thank you for that as well. So we thank you for always showing grace and mercy and forgiveness of our sins, both known and unknown, Lord. We thank you for loving us, and we love you. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen.